a group of maybe about five young adults stopped at the church one day. It was a Sunday afternoon. This was at my last parish. And they asked if they could look at the church. They were passing through town. They saw this big church that we had. And I said, I'll give you a tour. So I took them inside, and St. Peter's Church has a lot of paintings on the ceiling, on the walls, all over the place. It has a very well-defined stained glass with lots of images and lots of stories. It, e it even has some statues. So I was showing them all this about the church and the things that are distinctively Catholic, including the crucifix, the altar, went through the whole thing. And I could tell by, by their questions that they were interested, but that they had no starting point. This was all brand new to them. But they were of goodwill, so we had a nice conversation. And finally, towards the end, I noticed that the one young woman was wearing a cross, like a little, on a golden uh, chain. And it was a pretty good-sized cross. And at that point, I said, are any of you Catholic? And they said, no. And I said, did any of you even grow up in a, a church-attending home? I think one of them said, I went once in a while. And then I looked at the, the woman with the cross, and I said, but you're wearing a cross. And I could see she was embarrassed by that. And everybody else kind of like stood back like they knew something I didn't know. And I said, what's the problem? And she said, oh, look at this. It's not a cross. And she took it off. And it was a dagger. The top pulled out, and it was a very sharp blade, like a little knife, that fit in to the rest of the, what I called the cross as a sheath. And I realized why she was embarrassed when I called it a cross. And it kind of ended the conversation for all of us. And I said, well, I'm sorry I put you on the spot. I thought it was a cross. After they left, I thought, it really soured me on that whole conversation. And I couldn't figure out why. And probably it was because I truly respect the cross. It's such an important symbol of Christianity uh, that it means a whole lot to me. It doesn't even bother me if somebody wears it as a piece of jewelry. But because it was a dagger, <laughs> it just caught me off guard. I wasn't ready for that. My second thought, another week or two later, because I do think about things a lot, was, well, maybe it wasn't so bad after all. Because the cross in itself is a symbol of pain, suffering, death. And so maybe that it was a dagger wasn't that far removed. I think through the years what we've done is we've, we've, we glorify the cross. That's true. But we forget that the cross is also a sign of persecution and a sign of torture and killing. So we have this passage today in Matthew's Gospel that is directly on the heels of last week. Remember last week was that wonderful revelation. Peter said to Jesus, you are the Christ, the chosen one, the anointed one. You are the son of the living God. And Jesus says, I will build my church on this rock. It's a great day of celebration. And it's just a couple of moments later when Jesus says, I'm going to go to Jerusalem and I'm going to suffer and die. And that's when the same guy, Peter, said, oh, no, no, we don't want that. So he goes from being the hero to the one who's told to get behind him because you're acting like Satan. What a fall from grace so, so quickly. Why were the disciples so bothered by this whole turn of events? The first thing was, if they thought Jesus was the Messiah, the Christ, they just couldn't picture him of one that would have to suffer and die. That wasn't what, what they wanted. They wanted a hero, someone to come along and just turn everything around and lead them into victory. The second th thing, though, that probably bothered them was because Jesus said, oh, by the way, folks, if you really want to be my disciples, it's going to happen to you, too. Be ready to take up your cross. Deny yourself. The one who hangs on to his life loses it, but the one who's willing to let go of his life will.
will have it. Have you ever noticed we sort of have this notion, and I don't think it's an official thing, but lots of people fall into it, that our goal in life is to accumulate things. You know, uh, accumulate education, accumulate friends, accumulate wealth, accumulate homes, whatever it might be. I remember a man told me that uh, I had been at their house for dinner and the wife and the kids were inside and he said, you know, all my friends say it's that right time in my life that I should sell this house and buy something bigger. And he said, but I don't really want to. I kind of like this house. But it was almost that notion was being pressured upon him you got to keep working bigger and bigger and better and, and more. That might be what's sort of put at us at different times. But the older I get, the more I realize real joy, real peace of life in life comes by letting go. By not having to have not just stuff, but even control or power, or even influence, that somehow we just let go. And when Jesus says, deny yourself, or you'd be willing to lose your life for the sake of having it, that's what he's referring to, and that is a cross. That's not easy, but that is a cross in its own stead. And so that is what we're challenged to do. I remember a, a nun told me some years ago, she was dying of cancer, um, and it was in the fall. And as we talked, she was looking out the window and there were trees in the wind and the leaves were coming off the trees. And she said, she said, I've been meditating on that. Those trees have lost their orange leaves and their red leaves and the yellow leaves and the, even the brown leaves. And she said, that's what my life is like right now. I've, I'm spending a lot of time letting go. I'm just letting go. And then she said, it's not just letting go of the things I can't physically do anymore, because that was definitely true. But she said, just letting go of being in charge of my own life. We are the disciples of Jesus. Jesus is dragging us along to Jerusalem where he suffered and died. And he says, carry your cross as well. Deny yourself so that you can be more fully alive.